A spectacular fall day felt more like summer and football is having a tremendous season. But it's always basketball time in central New York. Feels like it's earlier and earlier every year. And now our first peek at the Orange as they take on one of the best teams in the East in Division II, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Welcome again, everybody, to the JMA Wireless Dome, along with the former Orange guard, Matt Rowe. I'm Matt Park. Great to have you along with us. And, Matt, everybody's excited to see the new team, but this time we really mean it. It is a new roster. A lot of new guys, transfers, but I think the theme of this team is let's get a winning season. They're coming off 16 and 17, and you're going to miss the Beheim brothers and Cole Swider, but a lot of exciting new guys on this roster. Before we get to the new guys, who's back? And certainly some names people will recognize. Well, I think that, you know, you had Jesse Edwards goes down last year late in the year, Matt, and it really hurt the team, but he's a rim protector down low. And then you have Joe Girard exterior. He's going to move to the shooting guard position, so you have two guys that you at least know what you're getting. As for those fresh faces, six freshmen and a transfer, even a new name. That's Chris Bell, formerly known as Chris Bunch. Benny Williams into a new role in the foreground there, and Judah Mintz will start at point guard for Coach Beheim in season number 47. Some size, and so lots of new pieces, Matt, to figure out. Well, I'm really looking forward to, we've heard a lot about Judah Mintz just to run the point guard's downhill guard, and then you have Chris Bell, who's a phenomenal shooter. We've heard in practice, inside, outside, 6'8", can really stroke it. We'll need to help Joe Girard and the perimeter to make shots. Away we go. Final four officiating crew. Roger Ayers, best in the ACC, flips it up, and we are underway. First of two exhibition games. Indiana U of PA last year went to the Final Four in Division II, and they're thinking about that again. Two returning starters, and one of those, Jesse Edwards, picks up where he left off, a putback for the game's first points. Jesse, a nice four to five inches taller than the entire roster he's going against IUP, and uh, he'll get a lot of putbacks uh, and jumps today off uh, high screen rolls. IUP likes to shoot a lot of threes, very accomplished players, including Shondell Jones, who calls his own number on the first possession. Boarded by the Cuse, getting the transition game going. And Judah Mintz will be the lead ball handler for the time being. Can't wait to see what development Benny Williams has had. Bell too strong. Gerard playing off the ball. Connects. It's going to see a lot of that this year, Matt. Great hesitation, fake step back, and... Uh, You'll have fresher legs this year. You know, I bring the ball up every game. Guys, defenders trying to stop you, and uh, he's now getting to run off a lot of screens, kind of like Buddy Bayheim did last year. IUP's been to the Dome for a couple of these exhibition games, and the last time, six years ago, got off to a tremendous start. Led the Orange 20 to 5. This time, the Cuse getting quality looks, not so much for the Crimson Hawks. Offensive board, though, by Tamoa Suleiman, and it'll stay with IUP underneath. The Hall of Famer getting set for season number 47. He takes these exhibition games pretty seriously. He have to. He's got to decide who's going to get minutes under the bright lights, who can contribute, and um, these, these are very important. Inner squads can only tell you so much. Shot clock reset. Ethan Porterfield at the foul line. Excellent shooter. And the board by the Orange's Chris Bell. Mintz dangerous on penetration. Didn't know with Jones, he started him. We thought he'd bring him in a little later. He's on a minute, you know, 20 minutes, coming off an ACL, leading score last year, 25 a game. And Coach Lombardi just figured I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring my best guys out early. Played only seven games last year. Porterfield on the nifty behind the back feed. A rare miss from three-point range, and the stick back there for Suleiman, who rebounds better than his 6'6 would suggest. IUP on the board. Porterfield. Shot better than 50% until late in the season last year for IUP from three-point range. Best in Division II. A little bump left of the lane as Gerard puts the pressure on the defense. And Joe Lombardi's been around the block, former pit assistant under Jamie Dixon, and he has been tremendously successful. Also under Coach Barron, St. Bonnie's down the road, but a great recruiter, Matt. Uh, you know, talking to him, he's great personality. A uh, guy you want to hang out with and uh, just uh, does the right thing, all the things about his program, and really a, a great influence on these kids trying to, uh, as Joe makes that first one, trying to trying to give them life lessons more than just on the basketball court. IUP has won 91 games in their last three full seasons, not counting COVID. Gonzaga's, in air quotes, only won 90. Right. Gives you an idea of just how successful they have been in Indiana, PA. 
the southwest portion of the state, not quite to Pittsburgh. Good start for Joseph Girard in the orange, up five. Only took coach two minutes and <laughs> ten seconds yep. to sub out Benny. Uh, Malik, didn't like the Malik way Brown, was, first sub in as a like, freshman. Didn't like the rebounding activity down the wall. That was quick. Porterfield against Brown. That's uh, Malik's specialty. Deflection on the backdoor pass by Girard. And now in a familiar role as he carries it across the line. These two have great chemistry, Gerard and Edwards. Played together for so long. Jesse figures to dominate against these smaller teams. Didn't get back here, though. Suleiman camped out, gets his second field goal. Jesse's first two shots was, uh, didn't like him left-handed. Now we're going to see Peter Carey coming off the bench to most likely come in for Jesse. The Orange figure to play more players this year. Go deeper. Of course, in the exhibition game, it is always skewed that way to get looks for these guys. And, Peter Carey well thought of. Gerard on the fadeaway. Off the mark from three-point range this time, and IUP looks to run. Shondell Jones can score from anywhere. Edwards boards the miss. Fumbles it through his own legs, and the scrappy Crimson Hawks earn back a possession. Jones fakes and fires. Edwards is there for the rebound. Lob on the run, two choices. And Bell got a little antsy near the rim. Judah Mintz also there, who has hops for days. They either could have put it down, neither did. And now on the take, Suleiman camping out and has been the go-to man. He has scored all of IUP's points. That's a big four-point swing there, Matt. An easy layup dunk on one end, and I think they were just indecisive. Judah thought it was to him, and it's nice to have two guys running on the right wing, but uh, one of them's got to step up and take it. Part of the chemistry you're settling at sure. this time of the year. Sure. Still trying to figure it out. Entry feed there, underthrown. And IUP can take the lead on this trip, even though it feels like they've been outplayed in a major way. Two freshmen at the scorer's table for Syracuse. Porterfield missed the first and the second. Gerard the defensive board. Chancey pass ahead of the field. Bell in pursuit, got tripped up. Out off of White. And IUP will have the ball when we come back after these uh, opening four minutes. Both teams with a little nerves playing under the lights for the first time. Syracuse up 7-6. There are all kinds of products in this world. Things that make life easier. You spent your life careful of thousand experts whose responsibility is to be there to guide you through the pass it on. Stacey Abrams backs Joe Biden totally, unquestioningly. She sucked up to Biden. She backed his economic agenda destroyed retirement savings, ravaged family budgets, sent America into recession. Here in Georgia, Brian Kemp stands his ground, cowers to no one. He brought jobs, cut family taxes, funded our schools. But Stacey Abrams wants to double down on failure. Don't let Stacey Abrams do to Georgia what they've done to America. So cozy. How many rooms are in there? Should we go check it out? Yeah. We get to stay here all weekend. When you stay at a Verbo, the host doesn't stay with you. It looks exactly like the picture. Because without privacy in your vacation home, it's a full log cabin, guys. It isn't really a vacation. Is it? There are all kinds of products in this world, things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there, to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. It's not easy being a farmer. You're up with the sun, and down in the dirt. It's hard work, but you like it that way. Nature is constantly changing, but it's not in your nature to quit. You sacrifice to support your family 
and our communities, it's only fair that there's someone supporting you. After the first four and a half minutes, both teams a little sloppy in shooting it. Syracuse two of eight, IUP three of 11. Last year, offense wasn't so much the problem. Defense was the nation's longest streak of consecutive winning seasons came to an end. Well, it's tough to watch. You lose, you know, Jesse Edwards late, who's your rim protector, is having a fantastic year, you know, an average of 12, 13 a game. And, um, you know, just defensively, I thought that Syracuse had times where they just couldn't stop people. And you're living and dying with a three point shot. And now this year, you just bring in so many athletes, and you look, and coaches already made, you have three freshmen out there. Uh, uh, four freshmen with Joe Girard, and uh, he's turned over four starters already in, within the first four and a half minutes. Talk of going man to man defense this year. Certainly, we'll see it in the exhibitions. The Orange also play Southern New Hampshire Tuesday of next week. Seen it right now. Yep. With Brown, a very good on the ball defender. Another player is very athletic. Carey, in particular, pass here is kick there's a reach in first foul in the game goes to uh, Justin Taylor of the orange the excellent uh, shooter wingman should play the two or three can really stroke it. it's interesting watching the defensive scheme complete shell drill if you look at it uh, you know really watch Joe he's not even a foul him in the corner stay in the lane and uh, off balance jumper is good and wanting a foul is Dave Morris. Guy can also score the third lead, scored 17 a game for IUP last year, but uh, not a good sign. The first time they go man to man, they drop a three on him. See if they get Taylor off the ball and set him up for shots. He goes back door to Gerard, who has been the hot hand for the Orange early. Seven of the nine for Gerard. He's feeling it. That's why he's the only starter left in the game, I believe. Man, man, which was nice to see. Always work it out here in the preseason. Look at some of the lineup combinations that there are going to be. A bank shot here doesn't fall. And Nathan Farrell on the whistle. Syracuse foul goes to Gerard. Be looking to see uh, just how uh, the combinations come together. And based on some of the people you're going to have in the game, you may have a smaller three men than you would like in the zone in that back line so uh, that's among the reasons that man to man will be considered this year Jaheim Bethea gets his first point of the day for IUP and we get our first look at Kadir Copeland Judah Mintz to the bench that's the beauty of having Joe as a senior you, you can throw him right back at the point guard uh, we've not seen Samir Torrance yet uh, but you know now he's a known commodity, right? Correct. He's not been in the first ten here, so it's interesting what coaches uh, wants to see the young freshman early. Copeland, a superior passer, going the opposite way for Taylor. Gerard trying to uh, shouldn't say trying, but is getting his early, and now a turnover. A uh, pick six, but the U IUP could not convert, and the Orange very fortunate. Each team has missed a bunny now. Copeland always with eyes up looking to distribute. Suleiman, an excellent defender for IUP on him. So 6-6 six, six out on the perimeter, and there's a foul. See, uh, Walden was asleep a little bit there, Copeland did. A little awkward shot, got, got bailed out there. Um, the last moment, right on the arm, you got to call that, but uh, not a bad move. So Kadir Copeland out of Philadelphia. Played as uh, many of these Syracuse players did at IMG Academy in Bradenton. Missed the free throw. Philadelphia long a rich uh, recruiting ground for Coach Beheim and his staff as Malik Brown checks out. And there's Samir Torrance for the first time, the Syracuse native. I thought Samir did a great job last year, Matt. <clears throat> you know, uh, when, when Buddy was out in that game in the ACC. And uh, just, you know, he's a, he's a glue guy. Uh, he's not going to do a lot of things. He's calming. He's athletic. And I uh, really felt like he was great. You know, you're going to have great options with he and what you, he and uh, Judah Mintz this year. Game tied at 10. Syracuse remains in man-to-man -man defense. Ethan Porterfield looking to find his range. And it is from beyond NBA range. But once more off the mark in three tries. 
Benny Williams with Saimir Torrance and Justin Taylor on the perimeter. Really kind of a, if you, Williams isn't really a guard, but can play on the perimeter. And the Orange had four out, one in for a moment. Now Taylor will try. He's got his first. It'll be big for him, Matt. He hit that first shot in the dome as a freshman. Starts get oozing confidence. It's very nice. You know the feeling. There's no building like this. It's uh, hard to shoot in here. It takes no a little extra. Hand up. They're trying to get Porterfield going. Such a key uh, for the Crimson Hawks. Averaged 17 points a game last year. Jumper from the corner. Kyle Pulse drills his first deep attempt of the day. It's a great shot. Porterfield's had three great looks, man. He's got a beautiful looking arc shot. He's just trying to find the, find the distance early on. Peter Carey with pink shoes. Torrance not taking a back seat in the shoe game either. And Copeland had opened triple try. Line drive attempt there, but the putback by Benny Williams. It's a way to get him going right there. You get that free throw, get a layup, get the confidence going, Benny. Nice offensive rebound. Benny really struggled at times with the adjustment to major college basketball last year. Not much of a shooter, but uh, maybe able to pick up some of the game around the rim. Dave Morris, talented player. Porterfield again. Having a tough night so far. Benny Williams trying to start the break. Justin Taylor not going to uh, fire one up in transition just yet. And Torrance, the steadying influence, settles things down. Really likes Saimir. He just does it so good defensively. His effort, and he's always moving. Benny on the step back. Got it. Working very hard on his shot in the offseason. Benny Williams with four points, and that's the margin for the Qs. And he with a little wake-up call after the two-and-a-half-minute uh, substitution. Seemed to respond. Dave Morris, talented player. Definitely a factor. Now they try to get Porterfield inside the arc, and Taylor says not here either. So the Orange getting all they want from the best D2 team in the East. Preseason number two, Justin Taylor, a deep one for the Orange. IUP able to answer, and it's a four-point Syracuse lead. There are all kinds of products in this world, things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there, to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. I'm Raphael Warnock, and I approve this message. Why should voters believe you in this? Voters should believe word. me because I've been very transparent about everything I've ever done. You know, I wrote a book about things I've done. Another lie from Herschel Walker. Here's Walker's book, and he didn't write a word about his violence towards women. Nothing about threatening to kill his wife. In fact, Walker wrote, I can't point to any major blow-ups between us. Herschel Walker's lying again. Marathon has the fuel to keep your engine running at peak performance. Because you never know where life is going to take you. Formula One cars are like aircraft but upside down. They're creating lift, but they're creating lift in the opposite sense. We're pushing the tires into the ground. The only bit that actually touches the ground are the tires. So as much downforce as you can have, it's just key to going faster through those phases. Aerodynamics is the prime performance differentiator on a Formula One car. So that's also why we dedicate a lot of resource, a lot of focus on aerodynamics. So cozy. How many rooms are in there? Should we go check it out? Yeah. We get to stay yeah. here all weekend. When you stay at a Verbo, I can't do it in the door code. The host doesn't stay with you. Yeah. It looks exactly like the picture. <laughs> because without privacy in your vacation home, it's a full log cabin, guys. It isn't really a vacation. Up by the fire. Is it? Oh, oh my God. A Bojangles family meal has more to choose from. Coleslaw. Dirty rice. Mac and cheese. 
Those scratch made biscuits. More choices of handcrafted fixings for everyone. You won't find that in a bucket or a bundle. Order in the app and get more. It's bow time. Ah! He's coming. All my life. What kind of will for? Nine minutes in, it is Syracuse by four against the visiting Crimson Hawks of Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Not affiliated with Indiana of uh, Bloomington. There's no Bob Knight or Calvert Chaney or Mike Woodson or any of those folks, but Joe Lombardi's won a lot of games, Matt. Uh, their last three full seasons, 33 wins, 28 and 30. Always a low seed in the NCAA division, just uh, running a real great program. And uh, seems to love it there. A lot of these guys try to use it as a stepping stone. You, you talk to Coach Lombardi, I think he's going to be there for the rest of his career. Pretty cool. Settled in 17 years now. Jumper off the window, hangs, and the hometown roll for Jaheim Buthea. First field goal of the game for him is a triple. I'm going to review that. That may have been a two for Buthea at the moment, 17-15. Benny Williams wisely giving it up. Long range and a round it off for Chris Bell, who does have three point shooting in his arsenal. From the short corner, Benny Williams just too easy as Demir Brooks takes it in against Williams. He's got to cut that off. Got to either take the foul or block the shot at his height. But uh, love Bell's shot. There's a third one. It just, I was just going to say, he looks good, too good to be 0 for 2. He nails that one. It's got great rotation. He just shoots real calm. No one's going to block his shot at 6'8. He's not afraid. Very high level high school player and recruit. Finished his prep days at Wasatch Academy in Utah. The name change just came uh, over the weekend. A late breaking deal. Well, popped away here by Bell, who stays out. Norns are an all headband team with three on the floor right now, and another foul on the perimeter. This one to uh, Benny Williams. That's how you coach behind staying with the man to man. I like the intensity of the ball pressure. Everybody else staying off in a shell, ready to help. And uh, the really, the big news of the, when you go man to man is you have to have that inside paint presence of Jesse he came out early in the game with a couple missed rebounds but yeah, he's going to be he's going to negate a lot of things on that back line rim protection he's out of the game at the moment Peter Carey in but also out of the game is Ethan Porterfield the best shooter uh, one of the best in division two but certainly the best for IUP and he has not yet been a factor shot clock at five and a challenge at the rim this time by Carey earns him a foul yeah, Ethan, Ethan Porterfield for me is a uh, I like this comparison as the drive down the lane. We're talking about rim protection. Carey gets the arm on it, but um, you know Porterfield to me looks kind of the role in the same shot. He hasn't made a shot yet, but a lot like Brady Manick last year at UNC. It's just the same kind of calmness, but you could tell the he hair. just can't get the rhythm going uh, on that perimeter uh, three-pointer. Shondell Jones, what a year he had last year. Scored against everybody. An ACL injury in his seventh game ended it. Munir Hima is in. He is the 11th player in the game already for the Orange. The transfer from Duquesne gives a rest to Peter Carey. Benny Williams seated as well. Jones, man, I don't care what level you're at. If you're averaging 25 points a game, you are a stud. And uh, what a difference maker he could be at the D2 level. Back to earn his master's degree. Repaired ACL. He uh, looks to be 100%. The knee brace is always bulky when you come back from that surgery. Jumper far side hits with a thud. Not this time for Bell. Dave Morris on the push. Suleiman in trouble. John Bolton Jacques, there's another. Oh. Fade away doesn't go. Hema contests, and Saimir Torrance wins the open floor loose ball. Copeland, an extra bunny hop in the lane, spotted by local official Pat Driscoll. How about the officiating crew? This is the final four game. Driscoll, Roger Ayers, and uh, Nathan Farrell on the younger side but uh, boy Roger Ayers is the considered by many the top official in the game and Pat Driscoll is, yeah, Pat Driscoll is uh, right up there Absolutely. too. 
Uh, yes, Final Four feel to it for sure. They have to get their work in too, Maddie. They got to <clears throat> figure things out. And, um, don't know many, you know, new rules this year. Or the point of emphasis, we always usually get that in a flopping is one flopping. thing we'll be keeping an eye flopping. on. Flopping. You can get Matt uh, the old Reggie Miller now. You can get an offensive foul for kind of kicking out your leg trying to draw a foul. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as it develops. That means more uh, reviews, I think. More time on the review camera. On the drive, Shondale Jones in traffic. There's an offensive foul called against Indiana's star grad student. So for IUP, Jones a bit aggressive here, and John Bolajak sliding over outside the restricted area. Sure, and that's a the, for Jones. That's a big test for his knee. You know, Coach Lombardi told us he tore the ACL on a fast break layup and got caught between two legs. And to go in there and look for that contact, that kind of tells me you're ready to to, 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 to play it 100%. And think how many players we've seen over the years, Matt, after an injury, they just don't have the mental part of it down where they really feel like going into harm's way. Ema trying to reverse, and a foul called on a reach in up top. Demir Brooks, redshirt freshman from New York, good backup big man for IUP, and he exits. Both teams are going to play a lot of players here tonight. Porterfield back in, maybe just restarting for him after a cold shooting start. Has to, you know, I'm sure with Coach Steph said you got to let it fly. Um, he can't be hesitant out here, and once he sees the first one go through, he'll, he'll be able to. Uh, get the confidence going. Gerard gave him a chance, then missed the three. Copeland tough in traffic. Yes and one. Copeland to me is a guy that you're going to look to as a freshman that can do a lot of little things. Although he had to travel a single look at, he has a nose for the ball. He's a great passer, very strong, and uh, is a big guard. Um, Covered a lot of one, ground yeah. to get to that ball. Can play the one, two, probably the three, Matt, and just... Uh, you can't teach that right there to be able to finish also. But a uh, very confident kid. And, uh, I, you know, everyone loves to play with the guy who looks to pass first. Second foul on Shondell Jones. Gets IUP's leading score out. There's Suleiman sitting as well. Jones actually staying in the game, but with the second fouls. Suleiman exited. Second free throw doesn't go. Have to keep an eye on the team's free throw shooting. Still a very small sample size here. And a four-point cushion. No surprise that this is a competitive game. IUP profiles almost like a Metro Atlantic conference team. They actually scrimmaged down the road at uh, Niagara playing Greg Paulus's team. That was very competitive on the weekend. Jones a little tough. floater. Tough. Tough matchup, tough. right, for and the Division know, two teams. It, it, like Coach Lombardi told us, all these kids rebound, too. They're not, the rebounding numbers aren't skewed, really, with a taller, more athletic orange team. Gerard around the hedge. In the lane, Mintz punched out and nobody there. John Bowles got a motor. He goes and goes. Not distracted, fortunately, by the uh, Philadelphia Eagles and Sixers and, and uh, Phillies in the World Series. A lot going on for that big Philly sports fan. Orange lead trim to two. You spent your life carefully building a legacy. We'll be just as careful helping you pass it on. Stacey Abrams backs Joe Biden totally, unquestioningly. She sucked up to Biden. She backed his economic agenda, destroyed retirement savings, ravaged family budgets, sent America into recession. Here in Georgia, Brian Kemp stands his ground powers to no one. He brought jobs, cut family taxes, funded our schools. But Stacey Abrams wants to double down on failure. Don't let Stacey Abrams do to Georgia what they've done to America. Here we go! Marathon has the fuel to keep your engine running at peak performance. Because you never know where life is going to take you. So cozy. How many rooms are in there? Should we go check it out? Yeah. We get to stay here all weekend. When you stay at a Verbo, I call doing the door code. The host doesn't stay with you. It looks exactly like the picture. <laughs> because without privacy in your vacation home, it's a full log cabin, guys. It isn't really it's a vacation. Up by the fire. Oh. Is it? Oh, oh my. God.
is coming. All my life. Wakanda will fall. Now is our time to strike. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Heard PG-13, November 11th. Formula One cars are like aircraft but upside down. They're creating lift, but they're creating lift in the opposite sense. We're pushing the tyres into the ground. The only bit that actually touches the ground are the tyres, so as much downforce as you can have, it's just key to going faster through those phases. Aerodynamics is the prime performance differentiator on a Formula One car. So that's also why we dedicate a lot of resource, a lot of focus on aerodynamics. The Hisense 100 day guarantee. You'll regret nothing about the TV. You'll still have all those regrets about the poor choices you've made in your life. Damn straight semi-famous brand ambassador. And now you can get awarded $100 when you buy a Hisense Google TV. That's $100 if you love it. 100 days to return it if you don't. Choose love, choose Hisense. Opening half and Syracuse by two. The Orange have trailed only briefly against IUP. And the Orange football team has trailed only briefly this season, coming off its first loss of the season. Looking to see everybody in orange in the dome. Saturday noon start sold out for an orange out against the Irish. So excited. Football's back as we know. That NC State game here in the dome, incredible. Uh, Clemson tough second half. But uh, Notre Dame, you wonder, with three and three, how many of their fans are going to travel? I hope that all 50,000 are all in orange, and uh, this place was rocking against NC State. Some of Notre Dame's tickets have come back, and those were sold to uh, Syracuse fans as the lead goes back to IUP. Dave Morris, not shying away from the moment, has given the Crimson Hawks the lead by one. IUP, you know, just stand, standing around, Maddie. They're not intimidated and playing their switching man-to-man. And uh, athletic. <laughs> yeah, they've got some horses, some shooters. Kima at the foul line. He's a guy who uh, is from the same area in terms of his recent college play. He played at uh, Duquesne in Pittsburgh. And he got it going at the end of last year for the Dukes. Porterfield woke up on the wrong side of the bed, it appears so far. Gerard picking up the turnover for Cope. Nobody there to board it for the Orange. It's headed the other way with KJ Rhodes on the rebound. For IUP. Think about this. IUP's down a point and probably their second most explosive scorer hasn't gotten it going yet. Some room to work in the middle of the defense. Now Porterfield. Not this time. Copeland dogged pursuit of the ball, but a foul is called. Tell Porterfield just clapping his hands. He's like, you know, these ones have to go down. He Got every mechanical correctness to his yeah. shot. Beautiful art. Yeah, you're Back surprised spin, he misses. Just when you release it, it's again, Brady Manic. You knew he was, you know, he's a 40, 45% three point shooter. Um, and this is what this guy did more than that last year at 48. But again, the depth perception in the dome, a little more athletic team you're playing against. And uh, with the orange on the front of jersey and, and Coach Bam going back to that 2 3 matchup. And he did not sneak up on the scouting report. Certainly, Syracuse well aware of Porterfield's credentials. Quick ball movement here with the shot clock down to six. Cross court. Pulls in and out. Porterfield, see if he can do it around the rim. Denied by Moo. And the Orange look to add to their lead. Now Gerard, that was on line all the way, but too strong, and it Plink goes over the board. Plink on, I like that. That's a great game. An old that's, school. Uh, that's a game show reference yeah, for you there. Absolutely. Price so is right. Here's Porterfield already having a tough night. And yes. Munir Hema, Matt, a pretty good lateral movement there. Nine straight misses to uh, open the game for Ethan Porterfield, the uh, IUP junior from Pennsylvania. Left-handed floater at the foul line. Doesn't go for Bethea. Juggled. There's a hard contact from John Bola Jock, and they're going to take a look here as the ball goes out of bounds. John Bowl appeared to be inadvertent, but... Uh, with Kyle Pulse and uh, Jumbo back to check on his well being, but uh, just Ooh. unfortunate here. That is a wake up call. Ooh. Oof. Yeah. That's uh, forehead to forehead. It may require 
either concussion protocol yeah, would, or I mean, stitching. Uh, you know, that's a, yeah, that that's was uh, quite a tough hit. hit. And, and it's the ones that you can't really brace for, right? Off balance, didn't see it coming. Stra trying to stretch the defense into Suleiman, but Edwards recovers, and Suleiman able to contort and spin for a nice looking shot inside. He's got eight of the 25 for IUP. All down low, some been crafty, but I love the two cross court passes and a great shot. Taylor coughed it up, but able to dive back in and earn at least the alternate possession, which which will give the ball to uh, IUP here. We're just under five minutes to go in the first half. Back and forth game as it's turned out. IUP had a 20 to 5 lead the last time they were here six years ago. Coach Lombardi saying, hey, Jimmy had to press us to get the lead back. Orange sure. ended up winning that game by 15. That was a Tyus battle, Tyler Lydon, that crew. Syracuse a little sloppy with the ball, Matt. Six turnovers already, and that really is the seventh one when you tie it up, I think, in my mind for the jump ball. IUP only two turnovers. Gerard able to take one. There was a charge taken earlier. The officials making sure they're on the same page here. And it, the turnovers being fouls especially impactful because you're losing the ball and picking up a personal on a key player like Josea here. Gerard not afraid of contact. Mintz at the controls here as allows Thomas and or uh, Tyler uh, Taylor rather and uh, Gerard to spread out on the wings. The Orange turn it over though and Porterfield still trying. This time he hits. Finally he says as the ball goes down and a timeout taken by Coach Beheim. Biggest lead of the night for IUP now four as Porterfield has shown up. That's not a three-pointer, Maddie. That is a four-pointer. They used to have the lines at the Hawks, and uh, this is just a deep three, and it was about time, he said, and that may start a barrage of threes for him. 28-24, IUP's got the lead as they get it to go down. Porterfield, an important one of ten. There are all kinds of products in this world, things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there, to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do.
Kentucky has its biggest lead of the game so far, and one of the themes this year is the continued education of Syracuse sophomore Benny Williams. Part of a couple key plays on the wrong end of this one, underthrown entry feed, and then IUP finally gets one from Porterfield, and it's in Benny's area. Well, IUP and KYP know your personnel. Um, you know, he's on the scout, but it didn't help that Benny had the turnover prior, so it's a compounding effect. And, uh, you know, Judah had the ball, it was on his side, and you have to know your personnel, and, he, and Benny should have been up, but that, that again, that was a four-pointer. I mean, that was in front of the high bench, so, you know, maybe Joe Girard. By a, by a player who had missed nine in a correct, row. Correct, correct, but my point is maybe know your personnel. Joe should have picked up the ball and slid Judah over because they're at the top of the zone. Uh, Benny got to stay in the game, so coach is going to let him play through the mistake. Mintz cut the deficit in half. And Indiana's been in a lot of big games. They won 18 in a row last year, getting all the way to the Final Four at Division II. Williams, a good weak side rebound here. And the Orange in the transition game. We'll see how Mintz operates in the open floor. Four out, one in for Jesse. Benny Williams, kind of a double pump, and maybe wanted to foul called there. It's going the other way with IUP up a deuce. Shondell Jones wide open for the lefty Bethea. And that was a rocket off the hands of Suleiman and Taylor. Touch last by the Crimson Hawks and uh, Joe Lombardi. Not going to go away either. He pretty much foreshadowed this. Don't, don't be surprised if we compete in the game. He called it. Um, he just got a competitive team. He's missing uh, two guys. Right. And he's limited One might be with Jones. Correct. He's limited with Jones on 20 minutes. Uh, I think he's going to play a little more than 20 because he's he's played at least 12 here in the first half. We're pretty close to it. Yeah. Jumper here is a brick with uh, Dallas Dillard and uh, Usman Diop, both unavailable at this stage for IUP, but do uh, figure to come back into play, including uh, Dillard, who's Harlem and St. Ray's. We're to three minutes to go in the first half. Edwards cuts off the baseline, nearly a turnover, it is. It's amazing what prep school does. You look at it, Justin Taylor. You know, a lot of people say he looks like Buddy Bam. Look at the physical difference of him as a freshman. You know, came in, you go to IMG, you get the, the college experience, and then came to school early. A lot of these freshmen uh, are usually long and lanky, and uh, Justin's pretty cut. Yeah, he uh, definitely has spent some time in the gym, and Buddy certainly did and developed over time. You can see uh, why they draw comparisons, but uh, Taylor ready to go physically as a freshman. And you haven't seen that all the time from people. You think about Buddy Beheim, Trevor Cooney, uh, people like that in that role, and they throw into it. Jumper right of the lane, and, and that's uh, what it's we talked ball. about before, yeah. an offensive foul called with the extension of the leg on Judah Mintz. So as he kicks out, Matt, they're going to whistle this. Yeah, it's a great call, and um, he can, even a defender was mostly saying, hey, you know, you got to look at that. Um, and, it, and going back to physique, I remember when Marek Dolojai first came <laughs> out of the tunnel and you were like, he he weighs about 165 pounds. He'll never compete as level. I mean, you didn't really say it, but he's, he's going to be tough physically, but he was just he kind of the different. Yeah, he, so he was wiry. a different of that. Uh, and he didn't play a ton his freshman year, but he never really got the bulk, but just totally a uh, great guy you'd want on your team that did all the the dirty working glue guy, but uh, yeah, you it's can amazing. do it at different sizes. Sure, and, sure. And some of these guys, right? I mean, you think about Jeremy Grant uh, as a freshman and how skinny he oh. seemed at the time, and the guy's putting together a very good NBA sure. career. So sure. right on uh, down the line, Akeem Moore. Yeah. Uh, guys, just the physiques are weird, but they all seem under this program uh, to, to get bigger and uh, more athletic. And they're built for the grind of the ACC season, even if you don't necessarily see the ball. Mintz, shin high dribble, able to get it back. Elevation for Benny Williams, couldn't get it over the rim, and a foul on the rebounding action called against Jesse Edwards. Sometimes when Benny goes up, he's looking for that foul. Like, it's almost like a, you know, I'm going to hesitate and uh, pump fake. You just got to, sometimes not dribbling into the defender is the right thing to do. Like, take what the defense gives you, and that's the next part of his process. Just 
under two minutes to go in the opening half. Still that part of learning to play at this level, right, when sure. everyone has talent and athleticism. Now it comes with uh, a lot of time by yourself or with a manager in a gym and doing the little things. Free throw shooting is going to set the game back a little bit. IUP is just two of seven from the line. Trap there. Gerard's in trouble. Went into the backcourt off of IUP and then a block called as Taylor was walled off along the sideline. That's Kyle Pulse, who, remember, was the one who got inadvertently hit forehead to forehead by John Bola Jock. IUP maintains the lead, and Taylor trying to change that as he goes to the line. Pulse was also the guy that got the offensive foul call with Judah with a kick. He's been hitting the head and <laughs> kicked in the shin. He's taking it at all ends. Welcome to the JMA. Justin Taylor, tremendous shooter. Rattles this one down. Taylor's from uh, ACC country, Charlottesville, Virginia. Finished his high school career at IMG. Kadir Copeland with some IMG experience and Jesse Edwards as well. Might need this to avoid being down at the half against the Division II visitors. And Taylor's able to connect. Solid minutes. Taylor just uh, doing, made a nice three and contributed to the free throw line and rebounding as well. 90 seconds to go in the half and back to a tie. Nearly a steal by Malik Brown on the gamble. Jones off the mark, offensive board for Porterfield. Shondell Jones watched by the much bigger Malik Brown here. You do not see a matchup like this in D2. On the drive, nifty take. Can't get the bounce to go, but uh, Pamela Suleiman, first to double figures on either team, is there for the putback. Vince is pass deflected. Nearly a turnover. Weird look there from Coach Lombardi making sure Jones got up. He's seen that. I think every time he goes down, you have to wonder, you know, how's the knee? Sure, and their regular season doesn't start until November 12th. They're going to play another ACC exhibition on the road at Miami. And these games are great tests and great workout and great for the coaching fraternity and all that, but they don't count for anything based on what the goals are for IUP this year. They want a national championship, at least a Final Four, and uh, that is a long way off. They need Jones for the long haul. Gerard, a little short. Putback is there for Brown, and a couple of these freshmen really crashed the glass, Matt. It's great. You know, you know with Joe shooting, you, you know, these freshmen, Matt, are going to make minutes on the little things. They're not, I don't see any of them really outside of Bell averaging double figures. Um, they're going to have to do rebounding and, uh, you know, steals, assists, uh, defense. Off the mark from long range, Dave Morris, who's been a nice spark for IUP in the first half, and Syracuse with the shot clock off. We'll get the final shot of the half and maybe go in with the lead. It's always important. And you have to respect all the, the guys who've gotten minutes with Coach Pam. He's played 12 deep. Execution here at the end of the half. Mintz on the take. Leaves, gets the basket, leaves a little meat on the bone for IUP. And a 40-footer is there. They'll go into the break with the lead. You called it meat on the bone, pizza in the box, whatever you want to say. To and there's a lesson putt. for Judah Yes, Benz. no doubt about it. Celebrating a little bit after Matt, his first field goal. And you got to pick up, and, and, you, and you went to the isolation a little bit too early. You could just sort of see that coming in slow motion that IUP was at least going to get a shot. Didn't mean they were going to make it. Wound up being a pretty long one. Not quite Pearl Washington territory, but a deep three for Dave Morris. Three of those in the half, and IUP's got the lead. You spent your life carefully building a legacy. We'll be just as careful helping you pass it on. Stacey Abrams backs Joe Biden totally, unquestioningly. She sucked up to Biden. She backed his economic agenda 
destroyed retirement savings, ravaged family budgets, sent America into recession. Here in Georgia, Brian Kemp stands his ground, cowers to no one. He brought jobs, cut family taxes, funded our schools. But Stacey Abrams wants to double down on failure. Don't let Stacey Abrams do to Georgia what they've done to America. Wherever we come from, we all have one thing in common. We all want the incredible new iPhone 14 Pro. Now at T-Mobile. T-Mobile gives you Apple TV Plus included. So watch your favorite Apple Originals on iPhone's most advanced display ever. Get iPhone 14 Pro on us with Apple TV Plus included. Now at T-Mobile. Progress is a race that has no end. After every finish line, another challenge awaits. How can we continue to push innovation in a sport at the forefront of technology? This is how. In game number one, the Orange find themselves in a one-point hole to Indiana University of Pennsylvania, 33 to 32 your score as we welcome you into the ACC Network Extra Halftime Report alongside Cameron Uzair. I'm Johnny Gadamowitz. Everybody exhale. Who Cam, <laughs> what a first half. What stands out through that first period of play? Well, for Syracuse, it's too much one-on-one -on -one play. Last year, what hurt Syracuse's offense is isolation. Yes, if you isolate a guy like Buddy Beheim on the right side of the court and let him go to work, He's an NBA prospect, as he's shown, same with Cole Swider, but you do it with freshmen, maybe a guy like Joe Girard, who works better in off-ball movement. Just seems like too much one-on-one -on -one play, too much isolation for the Qs. Well, a whole lot of new faces in new places, really on both sides for both Syracuse and IUP. Let's see, roll the tape and see how we got here. Indiana, Pennsylvania, and Syracuse. And early on, it was a familiar face cam for the Orange getting it done. If he can shoot like that, Syracuse is fine without Beheim and Swider gone. Dave Morris, the name to note for IUP in half number one. He had himself a nine-point half. Really good at shooting the ball and driving to the cup. Justin Taylor is one of the new names that Orange fans are very excited about for good reason. I love his follow through, his ability to move off of screens and create space for himself. Justin Taylor should be at least a sixth man option for this team. We mentioned it before the game. If IUP is going to pull off this upset, they need to let it fly. Kyle Pulse did just that, but there's Taylor again on the defensive end this time. And we'll see if SU's defense can hold up against a high-flying IUP team. Kadir Copeland, another name that Orange fans are very excited about. The freshman absorbing the contact. Johnny, a lot of length on this Syracuse team, but it hasn't helped them on the defensive side. The Orange defense hasn't learned. Look, you can't leave Dave Morris alone on the perimeter. He takes advantage. Dave Morris has looked so good from beyond the perimeter, and IUP is doing a great job working it inside against this mismatch of a zone and a man-to-man -man for Syracuse. Getting it done from three-point land, down on the low block, and oh yeah, Ethan Porterfield from three-point land again. That made it 28-24. Jim Beheim and company a little worried, and then really the icing on the cake to end that first half, IUP needed something to happen in a big way with time trickling down and they did just that camp how about dave morris last year a conference first team where you wondered where would the crimson hawks go without one of their best players armani foster now over at buffalo in the d1 ranks you go to morris and it's paid off 20 minutes down it's a one point lead for the crimson hawks and for Syracuse, Justin Taylor has been the freshman that has really impressed, albeit that one-point deficit. Yeah, Justin Taylor's looked really good. I want to focus a little on Jesse Edwards because as much as it's worth focusing on freshmen, Jesse Edwards, who missed the final couple games of last season due to an injury, you head into the postseason. Without Jesse Edwards, you lose Jesse Edwards for the last four or five games of the season. You lose all those games because you don't have that big-time player inside. Malik Brown doesn't look like he can play the part as a five I would see him more as a four type of power forward you need Jesse Edwards in there and when he is in there Syracuse is winning the rebounding battle which is good news for us Edwards of course one of the focal points for Syracuse we mentioned some of the players that the Orange lost 
but Edwards along with Joe Girard III, the two returners that Jim Beheim is really going to turn his sights to to be focal pieces on this year's team. So with Edwards and Girard, then you can start to add some of those complimentary freshmen, Taylor being one of them. Justin Taylor's looked really good, not just off the block, attacking the rim and hopping up for boards, showing his athleticism, but he can shoot, folks. This is a player that shot over 40% all throughout high school from the three-point land, and if Justin Taylor can do that off the dribble, he can do that off the catch. Syracuse, great news for them. The four stars looking really good, and some hops. How about Justin Taylor blocking it away? Syracuse is vying for one of these freshmen to be dynamic on offense and defense. Guess what? Taylor can shoot. He can also defend. First taste of college basketball action for six members of that Syracuse freshman class. But it is a one-point deficit for the Orange. 33-32 to 32 in favor of D2 Indiana University of Pennsylvania. We've got to hit a quick break, but still plenty to get to here on the ACC Network Extra Halftime Report. Orange down by one at the half. You spent your life carefully building a legacy. We'll be just as careful helping you pass it on. Stacey Abrams backs Joe Biden totally, unquestioningly. She sucked up to Biden. She backed his economic agenda, destroyed retirement savings, ravaged family budgets, sent America into recession. Here in Georgia, Brian Kemp stands his ground, cowers to no one. He brought jobs, cut family taxes, funded our schools. But Stacey Abrams wants to double down on failure. Don't let Stacey Abrams do to Georgia what they've done to America. I think we went too high. Kia, movement that inspires. He's coming. All my life. What kind of will for? Now is our time to strike. Black Panther, will come forever. Heard PG 13, November 11th. The Hisense 100 day guarantee. Jim wins for Syracuse men's basketball. It's on the line though. Jim Beheim's crew, a one point deficit at the halftime break to D2 Powerhouse, Indiana, Pennsylvania. We welcome you inside our new house studios for the ACC Network Extra Halftime Report alongside Cameron Ezer. I'm Johnny Gadamowitz. IUP up one at the break, and Cam, a big reason why their sharpshooter, Dave Morris, he's got nine points and really just torching this SU defense. Dave Morris, not just a sharpshooter, but a slasher as well. He's a guy that's really filling in for the loss of Armani Foster, who was second on the team in points. He led this team in assists last year. He goes to the D1 ranks to take his talents to Buffalo. All of a sudden, you think, well, who are you going to turn to at the point guard position? Because a guy like Shondale Jones, he's a player that loves to slash. He's a bowling ball. He likes to wreak, wreak havoc in the paint. So who can facilitate beyond the arc? And Dave Morris is doing just that. If he can also find his rhythm with his shot, I mean, this IUP team is really, really dangerous. For, from a Syracuse standpoint, a lot of people were looking forward to tonight in the context of the freshmen. Six new members of that freshman class. How are they going to sort of get acclimated and work themselves into this Syracuse rotation? But let's hit on someone who is not a member of that freshman class. He was a freshman last year and looking to make big strides now in year number two. It's Benny Williams. What did you see from him? Looks a little out of place. Last year, the notion on Benny Williams as he come to the game be a little bit, little bit lackluster. And it's not saying that he's letting his head get to him a five star. Many thought he was one of the best Syracuse recruits maybe ever in the past couple of years. But right now, Williams, he's slow to get to his defender. He's slow to get past screens. He is leaping up for rebounds, but we already are aware of his athleticism. Now I'm, what I want to see from Williams is his ability to get to the cup without utilizing his teammates. Yes, he can get up on rebounds. He can box out. We know this. This is a player that's 6'7", 6'8". He utilizes that hezzy move, but that shot, it's not going to work against Duke. 
North Carolina when they send doubles. So in this exhibition game, I'm hoping to see Benny Williams in more of an individualistic light. Yes, he can work with his teammates, but this is a guy that many thought, like I said, over the past couple of years, one of the best Syracuse recruits. He has to show it. Williams, never really someone that was known for the jump shot all too much. It was no secret ever really since he stepped foot on campus that his strength was the physicality and his ability to defend, his ability to rebound. Certainly doing that so far in game number one of the exhibition, and you would have to think that Syracuse fans, if he can get any sort of jump shot going, even off of that little hesitation move, as you mentioned, Cam, that's something that would be very impressive. But getting involved on that rebounding aspect, that's something that's going to be crucial for SU if they want to be solid on the glass this year. We've talked plenty about Syracuse's ability on the offensive side. I think it's worth noting that on, in the rebounding department last year, they improved mightily from a season ago in which Jesse Edwards played one of the most pivotal roles in the paint. Cole Swider was getting involved, Jimmy Beheim A season prior, no one really got it done. Barama Sadibe looked a bit slow, and the entire team didn't seem to put an emphasis on the rebounding department. This year, especially this game, Syracuse is doing a good job rebounding. I want to see Malik Brown, guys like that. Peter Carey, if he's inserted into the game, more of that freshman presence crashing the boards because if you know anything about Syracuse, they like to shoot the ball. If you know anything about Syracuse, they like to get more possessions and hey, they need to, to get more possessions, they need to rebound the basketball. And of course, these exhibition games, a prime opportunity for head coaches to experiment, roll out different groups of five on the floor and see what you like. Cam, take me in the mind of Jim Beheim right now. What's the key to the second half and pulling out a Syracuse victory here? Yeah, I don't think he's too excited. You, you saw him talking a little bit earlier with Benny Williams, and you could kind of guess what he was saying to Williams. Not too excited. On the defensive side, I mean, you have to sure up that man-to-man -man defense. It's a Syracuse team that most likely will play zone to start the season. They could transition to man-to-man. -man. You have six freshmen and a transfer. You have to realize you're reacclimating everyone into a system that's known zone for the past two decades. So what do you do? Sure up the man-to-man. -man. IUP is beating you way too much on give-and-go opportunities. It seems that Syracuse is actually falling into zone tendencies when they're in man-to-man -man and keep letting the freshmen shoot. Freshmen need confidence. Benny Williams wasn't able to gain that confidence last year. Now you play the hand of Jim Beheim. You have six freshmen. You have to go to them. Keep letting them shoot. I love the follow through of Chris Bell, of Justin Taylor. And if Judah Mintz can find his three point shot, good news for SU. Those freshmen definitely worth keeping an eye on in half number two and really rest the, uh, the rest of the year. Let's switch gears now, go over to that IUP standpoint of things. Sort of feels like they're playing with house money at this point. How do they go out there and get the job done? You're right in actually playing phenomenal basketball, doing it in every facet of the game. I'm really impressed with how the Crimson Hawks are crashing the boards. Do it more. It doesn't seem like there's an emphasis on the Syracuse side to crash the boards outside of Jesse Edwards. You keep doing that, you can find a lot of success. And I, I just talked about it. Syracuse defense, they look a bit lackluster. So what do you do to break a man-to-man -man defense that might be dropping into zone tendencies and doesn't really realize where uh, their teammates are? It just seems like at moments, Syracuse is falling into zone traps and then escaping back into a man and leaving someone wide open. So what you need to do, pass to create buckets. Don't go one-on-one. -on -one. If Syracuse is lost on the defensive side, especially in man-to-man, -man, and they can't stick with their defenders, and Syracuse is hoping to switch back from man-to-man -man over to zone, if you pass to create buckets, you'll beat a zone, and you'll beat a man-to-man -man because everyone's trying to drop back, and maybe that doesn't work out well. Mentioned Dave Morris earlier, nine points, very efficient, but he's been getting it done as a distributor as well. You would think that needs to continue. Oh, 100%. I mean, Dave Morris is playing, like I said, the Armani Foster role. If he can be the distributor for IUP the rest of this ball game, it'll open up a guy like Ethan Porterfield, who started the game one for 10. So you wonder, okay, you don't have an offensive threat, but if Dave Morris can continue to facilitate, he can continue to be an offensive weapon. All of a sudden, you have a true one. Right now, Syracuse doesn't look like they have a true one. Joe Girard and Judah Mintz are kind of shifting between that one and two role. Dave Morris, he's been great, and he's the reason why IUP is up by one. IUP had a stretch of three-plus minutes without points, but they have a one-point lead at the halftime break. Indiana, Pennsylvania, 33. 
Syracuse 32 in exhibition game one for the Orange in 2022-2023. That's going to do it for us on the ACC Network Extra Halftime Report. With Cameron Azir, I'm Johnny Gadamowitz. Thanks so much. Enjoy half number two. All right, Johnny and Cam, thank you, and welcome back to the JMA Wireless Dome, everybody, where IUP, thanks to a 40-footer at the horn from number five there, Dave Morris, has taken the lead, and not the type of team that's going to back down. We'll get into that over time with the Crimson Hawks, seeing if they could close out what would be an historic upset of the Orange in an exhibition game. Look at this breakdown, Matt, between... The returners and those fresh faces we told everybody about. Well, it's interesting. I think that Coach Bannon was trying to give the fresh faces and the freshmen more time under the lights to see what they did. But I think you're going to see more of the starting five, six, seven man rotation uh, in the second half, especially down one. But IUP hung with Syracuse in almost every category, you know, field goal percentage and points in the paint, which is really weird for an undersized team. Uh, you know, and, and they limited their turnovers, Matt. Mint's foul line jumper and IUP able to withstand that early orange possession to start the second half and now they've got the lead in the ball and one of the reasons Matt the points in the paint is on the perimeter now sue them on 10 in red here's back door and there's points in the paint for Dave Morris yeah they're just spreading out back cutting uh, rebounding well and making the extra pass uh, and as I said coach it's going to go to the starting five pretty much a lot you know the first Substitution at the scorer's table. O'Neill Hema to get a little protection around the rim. Jesse at the rim on the offensive end. Comes up a bit short, but a trip to the line. And Edwards has become a serviceable free throw shooter over his career. Good play by Porterfield. Backdoor pass. Pete Carrill passed away uh, not long ago, and uh, he's smiling down about that one. No doubt about it. Sacramento Kings, Princeton Tigers. Uh, it was a the brain trust of, uh, of the Princeton offense. But I think, you know, the biggest part of Jesse coming out here is just when you're when they're playing man to man, that center has to be a rim protector. Why are you staying tight to man? You're just half a step late. Jesse still figures to be an all ACC caliber player this year. And for the Orange to be very competitive in the conference, they'll need him to be. Now Edwards out for Munir Hema. Hema came out at the end of the year for Duquesne. The last seven games or so, he played significant minutes, averaged nearly five points and five rebounds. You know, Hema was the third big with behind Peter Carey coming in uh, in the orange center position. Benny Williams, a defensive board. He's going to bring it himself. The headband to skew for Chris Bell. The shot's off the mark. Hema. Touched it last. Long arms. You can see where Moo can be serviceable. Athletic guy covers a lot of ground and eats up space. It's a great. Uh, you know, depending on Carey's development, you have ten big fouls you can give back there if you do want to play the man-to-man. -man. Um, and even in the zone, rim protections, everything off of offensive rebounds, long threes create, you know, those rebounding uh, opportunities for the opposition. Turnover there by IUP in front of its own bench. Sondell Jones did wind up playing 12 minutes and change in the first half. Joe Lombardi told us he ticketed him for about 20 or so. And you might be thinking about having him for the stretch run. If this is a competitive game, it would do wonders for IUP marketing to win it and be competitive, be pretty proud of themselves. Open man in the corner was Bell, but a sloppy catch still throws it up anyway, and it's nowhere near the rim. It's just a bad. Hesitation Flat he wasn't it. Yeah, but he didn't you know you didn't um, he Didn't bring the ball down at all uh, to, to get momentum. It just kept him in his head and uh, That's a tough shot. He hesitated Weave action and the shot clock already halfway gone for the Crimson Hawks Suleiman into Porterfield Good seal and a skilled shot by Eight. Ethan Porterfield. So he's getting going IUP by three and Matt, how concerned are you about the Orange at this end? We'll see if Gerard ends those concerns to tie. He doesn't, but Bell stymied on the putback, and then Williams is foul. But you don't sense a lot of. It's hard to tell what the what's going on offensively in terms of what the plays are and what they're trying to accomplish. It's disjointed, and I think that 
you just said you don't get a sense of no sense of urgency at this point. Uh, you know, they're surviving on some offensive rebounds, but the shot selection is not great. And, you know, we, the one thing about teams under Coach Beheim, and we probably didn't see it as much because a lot of sets were run for Buddy or Jimmy or Cole last year. Uh, the extra pass, like, you have to try to find Joe to get him a look every two or three times down, but the ball isn't moving that well. It just seems to be, hey, one pass, and I'm going to go show you what I can do, and that's where roles are going to be defined, I believe, in the next two weeks. Bell out, Justin Taylor in, and the shot, certainly an area of improvement for Benny Williams. He gets both free throws to go. Orange down one. Two and a half minutes gone in the second half, and IUP not going away. Porterfield, his second three. And you can see it coming, Matt, that not a guy you want to let heat up. You, you look at, I said it earlier, he's Brady Manic prototype. He just, he can kick you inside, he can get you outside, but you knew the shot was there. A steal, Shondell Jones. Williams sizing him up. Denies at the rim, but the shot is still good off the glass. Shondell Jones, that game travels. And it's a six-point lead, biggest of the night for IUP. I look at Joe Lombardi, and he's just cool, cool as a cucumber. He's, he knew this was, they're going to be competitive. And you just look at him. He's not surprised at all. Uh, he's got his hands folded, and uh, he sees this every day in practice. Very well connected in the coaching industry. And uh, Shondell Jones, you score 25 points a game. Uh, you've got every trick in the book, whether that's long range or at the rim. And a uh, cool customer right there. And, Joe Lombardi. Look at he's not a screamer. He's not a yeller. He's talking very calm to the referees. You can tell. Look at his team. The, the, his star player Jones respects him. Uh, but you, you love to play for that guy. Made it very clear the respect he has for the Syracuse program and uh, even the willingness to play this game because he, as you might imagine a lot of D1 programs aren't exactly uh, lining up to play the top teams at Division two and potentially risk a loss. Syracuse hasn't lost an exhibition game since the infamous defeat in 2009 to a Lawrence at Paragon and Lemoyne, Coach Steve Evans. But IUP's got a six-point pad right now. And an easy backdoor entry there to Jones, but he can't convert as Edwards and Taylor recover. Good hesitation by Mintz. And he got away with one and cans the shot. Absolutely got away with the offensive call there and a flop though. So uh, Roger Ayers think, saw it completely opposite of the way we did. So a technical for the flop and both of these kind of calls of, em of emphasis points of emphasis that we thought we might see in the game have uh, shown up. It's a tough call. I, I saw a little uh, forearm from Judah there. I didn't see it that way. And. Because it's a technical, Joseph Gerard gets to go to the line. One of the all-time great free throw shooters here. Just a one-shot technical. Yeah, first flop of the year, Roger Ayers says. He's notched his belt. <laughs> not, a, not a big surprise that we would see uh, some of that here tonight. We saw the Reggie Miller kick the leg out call and a flop. And maybe the last flop of the year. Part of the reason you call him in exhibition games and lay sure. down the law is sure. to uh, set that. The next thing, if we see an assistant coach called for a coaching box violation, then they will have checked every box. It's not like Roger Ayers has to show off to the officiating no. supervisors. He's going to be in the deep in the tournament. Here's a post pattern and a push by Judah Mintz getting back late right into the forearm shiver to uh, Dave Morris, who had beaten the defense down the field. One thing I saw in that play, though, although Judah gets beat over the top, uh, we could talk about prevent zones in the NFL. He's got closeout speed. He closed that gap of about 10 yards in a matter of a second uh, to even be there uh, to, to try to contest that shot. Dave Morris from Erie, a transfer out of uh, Tennessee State, and the leading scorer on the night so far. 17 points a game last year. The kind of the Third or fourth guy scoring last year for IUP, but uh, five Division One transfers on this team as well, Matt. So these kids, you know, they've, they've seen this level. Gerard, tough shot there, and jammed home by Benny Williams. 
right Quickly, back the though, other end. Doing, don't get down the floor. Porterfield beats them down. So IUP answering a score with one. Four minutes gone in the second half and a timeout coming up. IUP by five, but Judah Mintz takes three of those. Judah seems to be a very emotional guy. You know, he hits that jumper to end the half, makes the three there, trying to will his team to get competitive on the defensive end. You see why he could get on a streak, take over a game for a while, make everything he looks at. Suleiman, again on the back door cut. It's Shondell Jones, not enough on it. Jesse Edwards with the carom. Gerard to a trailing mince, had a steam into the lane. But could have tied the game. Loose on the floor, and Mintz unable to dig it out. So, this one has been back and forth, maybe even a little more than we expected. And the athleticism uh, on both ends of the floor. IUP making shots as well. Benny Williams with an epic cram here, and the Orange trail by two. There are all kinds of products in this world, things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there, to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. Stacey Abrams backs Joe Biden totally, unquestioningly. She sucked up to Biden. She backed his economic agenda, destroyed retirement savings, ravaged family budgets, sent America into recession. Here in Georgia, Brian Kemp stands his ground, cowers to no one. He brought jobs, cut family taxes, funded our schools. But Stacey Abrams wants to double down on failure. Don't let Stacey Abrams do to Georgia what they've done to America. What are you doing here? I've got this feeling we'll meet again. Kia, movement that inspires. Formula One cars are like aircraft but upside down. They're creating lift, but they're creating lift in the opposite sense. We're pushing the tires into the ground. The only bit that actually touches the ground are the tires, so as much downforce as you can have, it's just key to going faster through those phases. Aerodynamics is the prime performance differentiator on a Formula One car. So that's also why we dedicate a lot of resource, a lot of focus on aerodynamics. And a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is it has that kick. Not too spicy, but it's just enough for your taste buds to feel that level of heat. And you're like, ooh, this is good. It's the perfect amount of spicy. Hi, I'm Capri, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is the chicken. You can tell they actually put it on the grill, cooked it in the sauce, marinated it. You're definitely getting a good grilled spicy sandwich. North Carolina again the cream of the crop in college basketball and right there with Duke two new coaches Hubert Davis into year two John Shire with his first year Matt and uh, at least the top three the usual suspects in the conference they really are and you throw in Florida State and ND um, but Syracuse smack dab in the middle uh, with eight and um, it probably is a, a thing that's unknown to coaches of how these freshmen are going to step up a lot of teams will be figuring it out uh, over the course of the season. North Carolina not one of those they bring back some veterans Duke with uh, all of the top freshmen in the conference and so away we go this season soon to start always excited to see how the teams gel Ethan Porterfield to the left side and a jumper there that would have added to the Indiana lead offensive board 
IUP has benefited from the last of seven lead changes in this game. And has led it about as much as the orange half. Benny Williams with a rebound there on the miss by Morris. 15 minutes to go and the Q's down two. What would you like to see offensively, Matt? Anything uh, that you, really, you're certain works right now? Sure. I really think you got to look, you know, J Joe DeGerard seems to be on an island out there and get Jesse in the pick and roll game on the side of the court. Gerard, other than the free throw, hasn't scored since the first five and a half minutes of the game. He had seven points early. Sure. And not a field goal since the 14-36 mark of the first half. And again, they're doing a great job defensively on him. They're, they're trying to deny everything he's, he tries to bring out there. And uh, Morris doing a great job. Good look here to an open Edwards cutting off the ball. Yes and a foul for Jesse. Again, we just talked about it. Get Jesse on the roll game. Um, try to, you know, and, and again, this is Joe facilitating because you have to play the shooter and you're going against guys that are six, seven, six, eight down low. That's a that's a gimme to me. Guys Porterfield's the biggest that they have for IUP, and Edwards still playing over his head. Sure. It's a big differential there. Jesse really improved last year, averaged 12 points per game, and when he got hurt at Boston College, it was a turning of the tide. Not that the Orange were a lock to make the tournament at that point either. They were just two games over 500, but they went three and six without him. Pass there into the short corner. Porterfield out of trouble, and Morris tees up another. That's a brick city. Yeah. Again. yeah, it's a hard offensive rebound when it comes that hard off the window. Porterfield, the set shot. Bring it up. I mean, he's a really good shooter, Matt. He started 0 for 9. <laughs> yeah, he missed his first 9. <laughs> now he has made three three-pointers in eight tries. And a timeout taken by Jim Beheim. We'll head to a timeout here as the Hall of Famer tries to figure it out. Five in arrears against a very good Division II team on the road. There are all kinds of products in this world. Things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. I'm Raphael Warnock, and I approve this message. Why should voters believe you in this? Voters should believe word. me because I've been very transparent about everything I've ever done. You know, I wrote a book about things I've done. Another lie from Herschel Walker. Here's Walker's book, and he didn't write a word about his violence towards women. Nothing about threatening to kill his wife. In fact, Walker wrote, I can't point to any major blow-ups between us. Herschel Walker's lying again. When you stay at a Verbo, the host doesn't stay with you. Because without privacy in your vacation home, it isn't really a vacation, is it? Progress is a race that has no end. After every finish line, another challenge awaits. How can we continue to push innovation in a sport at the forefront of technology? This is how. Discover how Aramco and the Aston Martin Formula One team aim to meet Formula One's sustainable fuel targets. Aramco, powered by how. I think we went too high. Kia, movement that inspires. The Hisense 100 day guarantee. You'll regret nothing about the TV. You'll still have all those regrets about the poor choices you've made in your life. Damn straight semi-famous brand ambassador. And now you can get awarded $100 when you buy a Hisense Google TV. That's 
$100 if you love it. 100 days to return it if you don't. Choose love. Choose Hisense. UP, very seasoned, and uh, been around the block. He knows what he wants out of his program. Cool customer, and he's talking about loving and serving others. This is part of a mission trip he took with some of his players. Uh, Enrique Cordon hasn't played in the game yet tonight, along with Tomo Suleiman and Ethan Porterfield. They went to the uh, DR mat and uh, down to the Dominican, spreading the word and uh, humility, sacrifice, those types of things that they're as important as uh, championships for IUP and Coach Lombardi. Said they're they're more important than wins, but his winning record's pretty good. But um, he did a lot of it's easy to say that when you're winning games. Yeah, too, right? yeah, a lot of gardening and painting, and uh, it wasn't down there just for for show. Jesse Edwards in the lane, stretched out, couldn't get there. Matt, I know it wasn't lost on you, uh, being an avid golfer yourself. Uh, Coach Lombardi said he may have a hookup at Oakmont. Maybe <laughs> we take him up on that. <laughs> Ring him up. Go find him in the uh, next off season. Get the sticks and the head to those church pew bunkers in southwestern PA. That's the spot. Jesse Edwards at the line. Unable to convert the second of two, made the first. Simeer coming in. Uh, Torrance, this is the next, the second sub of the, of, of the half. The third with Justin Taylor. Torrance got five minutes of run in the first half. Seven minutes gone in the second. IUP leads by four. High arcing shot for Morris right down the center. Leading score for all both teams, and uh, I believe that's 18 for him. He's got four threes and 18 total. Joe Girard's got to get going. Haven't heard from him since early in the game. Look away pass here to Taylor. Edwards out to get Gerard on a screen, which he turns down, and a deflection by Kyle Pulse. Do it again here with a side out of the shot clock at nine. Gerard kind of getting a little advice here, maybe saying, hey, just go, right? Yeah, it's got to be something there. We'll give him a, a rest before the last eight, nine minute run here. Mintz, well so. positioned for that shot off balance. Mintz has a gift. Five point game, but Mintz the block could not cut off the sideline there. As Jaheim Bethea was taking up the floor, three fouls on Mintz. So now we've seen man to man, coach going to full court pressure. Should try to uh, get some more possessions and turn IUP over. That was one of the methods for uh, getting back in the game. The last time it was a bit close for comfort when IUP visited six years ago. KJ Rhodes, number two in red, did not score in the first half. Coughed up in the lane there by Shondell Jones and the Orange Benefit. Now Kadir Copeland in and Justin Taylor out. That figures maybe to be a defensive improvement, but we're about to find out. Still getting to know everybody here and what uh, they all bring to the table. Coach trying to find a, uh, some chemistry in a lot of different units. High screen up top. See if Edwards can get himself open in the lane. Williams with his defender falling. That one rattles down. And they're going to put the press on. That's like 6'8", uh, bouncy Benny Williams guarding the inbound. Well, giving up two easy baskets yeah, the, on this other end. Yeah, kind of the leak out against the press, which is part of the risk of it. Saimir Torrance is down in the backcourt. sure if he wiped out there and a timeout here will step aside with Syracuse back to within three Torrance on his feet in a three-point game New York Life's product isn't something you can touch or click on it's 12,000 experts there to guide you through life's biggest moments this is our product this is what we do I was diagnosed with cancer in May, and I now take a great many more prescription drugs. For years, politicians have talked about forcing drug companies to lower their prices. 
But that didn't happen until Raphael Warnock finally got it done. Without Raphael Warnock, this never would have passed. Senator Warnock not only cares about seniors, but he actually got something done for us. I'm Raphael Warnock, and I approve this message. Wherever we come from, we all have one thing in common. We all want the incredible new iPhone 14 Pro. Now at T-Mobile. T-Mobile gives you Apple TV Plus included. So watch your favorite Apple Originals on iPhone's most advanced display ever. Get iPhone 14 Pro on us with Apple TV Plus included. Now at T-Mobile. I think we went too high. Kia, movement that inspires. Progress is a race that has no end. After every finish line, another challenge awaits. How can we continue to push innovation in a sport at the forefront of technology? This is how. Discover how Aramco and the Aston Martin Formula One team aim to meet Formula One's sustainable fuel targets. Aramco, powered by how. The Hisense 100 day guarantee. You'll regret nothing about the TV. Now you can get awarded $100 when you buy a Hisense Google TV. That's $100 if you love it, 100 days to return it if you don't. Audi 2022 MLS Cup Playoffs, LAFC versus Austin FC, Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Scary moment here, Saimir Torrance. Every time you see somebody wipe out, no contact really, you get concerned. But uh, Saimir favored his right knee there for a moment, able to uh, pop up at least for right now, okay. Great sign, you know, wet spots, and uh, you know, you're, you've been sitting for a while, and all of a sudden you're, you're into this uh, <clears throat> full court pressure and uh, kind of changing gears of the game, and you hope he gets back in and is able to loosen it up. Shout out to a longtime basketball athletic trainer, Brad Pike, moved on to a different position. And, uh, welcome to uh, Mike Mangano on the program now in the lane shot off the window doesn't go but uh, Benny Williams who there were some reports Matt of his uh, filling out a little bit being taller I mean it kind of indicates a, a little bit last year some of his struggles still growing he looks the part now of an ACC player not that he didn't last year but uh, becoming uh, more filled out and uh, promising year ahead for him. Look, you know, you, he's going to have the opportunity, and it's what he makes of it. Um, you know, with three starters gone, and he plays, uh, you know, two of those three positions that, that left. You know, you lose your starting shooting guard, the small forward, and your foreman. Uh, he can play any of those besides the two, maybe. He's a 3-4 with his length. The minutes are there. So bouncy. And uh, trap put on there by uh, Mince and Williams. IUP able to get out of it, still leading by a point. Who does IUP turn to when they really need a basket? I was just lo yeah. looking at uh, Jones, you know, Morris, and Juleman all on the right side of the floor. Correct, the one guy. It's two. Jones. Shot clock was at two there. Off the bracket and out of bounds to the orange. The guy you got to get back in is Ethan. He's the one that, yeah. you know, caught fire. And uh, he's been in the middle of that hub of the free throw line, which kind of can kill his own, as we know. He's a threat to shoot. He's a great backdoor passer. We saw him the Princeton cut. He had the assist there and got the three that, that put him up in the biggest lead with with six, where Coach Benheim had to call a timeout. Missed his first nine shots. He's made five in a row since. But Ethan Porterfield on the bench right now with a little more than a quarter of the game to go. 
Orange looking to take the lead. They've got it, thanks to a three from Benny Williams. That's huge for his confidence. He's still a little flat, but uh, he's, he's come alive this second half. First lead of the half. The Orange gave up that last second shot at the first half horn. As we talk, here comes Ethan Porterfield at the scorer's table. High low, disrupted by the length of Edwards. Williams collects. We'll see if the Orange can put the hammer down here. Mitts behind the back, so flashy and fouled as Dave Morris could not keep him in front. Second foul on Morris. Well, the Orange have scored nine in a row to take the lead as we approach the quarter pole here. Box set for Girard. Edwards off the fake and the slam. Cooking on all cylinders, and now you're coming out of the press, going back to the, the two three and getting the crowd into it. Porterfield is back in the game, so that's the most prolific of the three point shooters, but they have plenty. They have two players that made better than 80 last year. Long range jumper, Morris and Porterfield were the two. And this one ricochets out of bounds. Here's the capper, at least so far, Matt, on a 10 nothing run. I love the, uh, you know, the, 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 the shoulder fake. A lot of quarterbacks do that to almost like a play action to fake a flat pass and go along. And Jesse kind of faked the shoulders to Joe coming off the inbounds pass for a three and had clear sailing to the basket. Jesse Edwards. From RPO. <laughs> to Gerard. Gerard, a high school state championship. Quarterback at Glens Falls retreating here. Shot clock is at five. Copeland with a swish using every bit of the shot clock. That's a tough shot behind the backboard. And, uh, I think it surprised him. 12 0 run is forced a Joe Lombardi timeout. Syracuse has turned the tables. That's all part of uh, playing the game, right, Matt? You're going to have these back and forth. You're going to be down a bit, and the Orange responded. Well, you know, Benny Williams has just been great out there, Matt. Got to the free throw line, two free throws, a dunk, um, you know, in the three-pointer. That's seven right there. Uh, that He's really stepped up in the point of that. That full-court pressure's kind of got him moving more towards the basket with that roll. Well, the fans are being heard from as the Orange have made a rally here. They've been heard from all season long. On the football field, this court will be taken up shortly. And the way paved for the Qs and Notre Dame in the Dome. Highly anticipated matchup. Notre Dame just settled its schedule for the next several years with ACC opponents. But this is their first trip to the Dome since 2003. And an orange out. So everybody get their orange ready. There's a sold out game already. If you don't have a ticket at this point, the uh, secondary marketplace would be your <laughs> answer. But uh, get the orange on your back as well when you come in. That last time in, Walter Reyes, five touchdowns, over 200 yards, rushing, uh, rest in peace. And uh, anytime you're involved with in Notre Dame, even if they're four and three, uh, it's historic. Absolutely. And I think the biggest thing with the NC State game was the great weather like we had today with all the tailgating and the quad. You're hoping you know, the weather forecast is great on Saturday. Foul line jumper for Shondell Jones doesn't go. Edwards has been active around the rim. Rebound number six for him. Mintz turning down the ball screen, trying to spread the floor. Step back. A little slip himself and another flop. He got the three and one. So it's going to be a new kind of four point play. Judah got the flop. Unless, unless Judah, Judah got, got the, the call. So that's Correct. the other way to look at it. So he steps back. Yes, he is called for flopping. So it's a, it is score the goal, I believe. Yes. The three is good. It is a flop called on Mintz, so now that's a potentially a two-point play as Shondell Jones goes, Matt. This is going to take some getting used to as the officials lay down the law. Jones did miss, though. 
I didn't love the shot either. He wanted the screen, right. called Jesse off, and I thought it was a, a disjointed shot. Flop, and um, didn't hurt him. I mean, Jones misses the free throw, but uh, that's a that's a tough call. It could have been, you know, he got hit on the arm too. Could have been a four-point play. So that's a, I guess it's a safety issue. It's an integrity of the game issue. They're trying to clean that up. At the uh, foul line, Jones bumped, and he gets another chance at a three-point play. So good among the bodies at close range. He's got that wide body. He kind of reminds me of a, the Villanova players. Uh, yeah. For Jay Wright, just bouncing. Wide. Wide, and just the two-legged stop down there. Probably a precaution with the ACL. <clears throat> Not to leave off of one foot, but uh, just knows how to draw contact. And I think he's... You know, Jones, I think, you know, Matt has not gotten a couple calls in this game with, uh, you know, Syracuse being the home team and uh, kind of borderline. Six-point Syracuse lead. Mintz, he's got every move in the book. A tough, tough guy to guard one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I mean, he, what got him going was the shot at the end of the half going too early, but he's had three or four pull-ups this half that are... You know, they can't stop. High low to Porterfield with Williams flying by. Porterfield patient to lay it in. Porterfield's got a great feel. Nothing, uh, not crazy athletic. Had averaged seven rebounds a game last year, but just really knows how to score. And you got to give a kid a lot of credit starting 0 for 9. Vince might have gotten away with a walk. Threw it behind Copeland. He's in trouble, but finding Edwards. And bailed out by a foul call. Porterfield, the guilty party. The orange again going to Edwards to the rim. A lot of teaching moments in these exhibition games. Benny Williams has uh, shown some flashes. Jesse Edwards as well with the fake and the flush. There are all kinds of products in this world. Things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there, to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. Stacey Abrams backs Joe Biden totally, unquestioningly. She sucked up to Biden. She backed his economic agenda, destroyed retirement savings, ravaged family budgets, sent America into recession. Here in Georgia, Brian Kemp stands his ground, cowers to no one. He brought jobs, cut family taxes, funded our schools. But Stacey Abrams wants to double down on failure. Don't let Stacey Abrams do to Georgia what they've done to America. What are you doing here? that inspires. Yo, my name is Luis, and the little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is the different flavors that are hitting your mouth at every millisecond. You get the explosion and the zestiness of the chicken, then that spice just kicks in, and if you had that cilantro lime, perfection. Hi, this is Becky, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is that marinade, they make sure that it is on the entire piece of chicken and not just on top. The pepper, whatever else is secret in their marinade, it's amazing. This might be the most emotionally charged match of the modern era. So Black Girl Hockey Club is all about building a community within the community.
play about to resume here in the dome with Jesse Edwards at the line. The Orange using a 12 nothing run to turn the tables on IUP and take the lead. We'll see if they can put it away. Another exhibition game on Tuesday with Southern New Hampshire coming in. And then it starts for real on the 7th. The women open the season under Felicia Leggett Jack at 3.30. Men play at 8 o'clock that night. You can see it all right here on ACC Network Extra. Here's a guy who's got to be chopping at the bit, Matt, for this season and for things to count because it's been a long time since uh, he was shut down due to injury in February. And he built up his body real well, got a little uh, thicker up top. And Struggling at the free throw line tonight, but uh, he's been a man amongst boys down low. Again, he's as a four to five inch height advantage down low against IUP. Off-season experience with the Dutch national team gets the roll on the second free throw. Orange by seven, looking for a little breathing room. Neither team has led by double digits yet in this game. Indiana with some shooters. Pulse to Jones. Edwards sweeps it away. Gerard hunting a shot and fouled about 15 feet out. Of course, that's always a break. Gerard's such a good free throw shooter. Tamawa Suleiman, a little gimpy after the play. Joe, quick seven out of the first nine. Hits a free throw on that technical flopping call. Uh, hasn't really had much looks. He has no field goals, Matt, since five yeah, and a half minutes so into the game. So suffocated, but you know, the second half really Spearheaded by Benny Williams and Judah Mintz, they're both at uh, 29 points combined. And uh, to me, those guys were the guys that attacked. Gerard with better than 1,100 career points. As he enters his final season with the Orange. That's after many, many thousands of points at Glens Falls High, more than anybody who's ever played basketball in the state of New York. Including even you, Matt Rowe. <laughs> well, he had the three-point line, Matt. <laughs> That's true. He didn't average. What would you average? About 30 and 15? I don't know. But he, probably, he probably started as an eighth grader at Glens yeah. Falls. I, I didn't play varsity yeah, until my sophomore team. year. Yeah. Trap here. Morris in trouble along the baseline. Suleiman feeling better when he gets the ball in his hands. A miss. Copeland the rebound. And Pat Driscoll's got a foul. Tell you this, Joe Lombardi is team scrap. You know, they... they they are not backing down. They go for all the 50-50 balls. Uh, tough shot there, but you know, the rebounding, they're, they're around the ball. This foul's called on Copeland. And Coach Beheim's got that face we've seen a time or two before. Puzzled. One word for it. Dave Morris to trigger in. Copeland got his hand on that one. That's one thing, Matt, I can guarantee we're going to see more of this year. Just deflections by long-armed athletes in the game. No doubt, no doubt. Um, and that was, a, and that's where the teams <clears throat> at Syracuse have always done <clears throat> back line, back line length. Still have the shot clock for IUP, even though this possession is taking a while. And Copeland this time try and try again is able to win the possession for the Orange. A little makeup call there probably, but high motor uh, for him, huh? Sure. Mintz to Girard. Book it. It's a great play on a side dribble, really created there by Judah, drawing the defense and back handoff for a deep three. Second three of the night for Joe Girard. IUP looking to answer with Morris missing. And another deflection, this time Mintz to Copeland, loose up the sideline, and Mintz couldn't get there. The fans that have come tonight, though, might have been treated to what we thought about this team. They're as advertised from an athleticism perspective. You have some bouncy athletes, and that's what Syracuse basketball for the last 20 or so years certainly has been known for. Your only worry is they're freshmen. <laughs> you know, just to, you got to go through. The ACC is a different animal. Step back, and Gerard gets the roll. And Porterfield wiped out. A wet spot down yeah, yeah, I think so. The uh, Libman mop team will get on it post haste. <laughs> and now Jaheim Bethea entering, replacing Shondell Jones. He didn't need to prove anything uh, here tonight. Maybe his night is done at this point because 
uh, IUP may be out of steam here down the stretch, but uh, they've got another exhibition coming up and then goes for real in his grad student season on the 12th. He'll be ready come the season, and that's when you, when you want him. These tune-ups are great for him just to get the, the, the left knee uh, moving. In the lane, Suleiman with the hammer. Good-looking athlete there. Suleiman is uh, English. He's from London, but went to high school in Maryland. Out of bounds and a side out for the Cuse. A little tighter group in the second half. Samir Torrance looked like a minor injury after playing five minutes in the first half. He's seated on the bench there, as you can see. Peter Carey, minimal action after halftime. I don't think he got in. Yeah, don't um, so. nope. and, you know, and even Adrian Bell. Audrey and Jerry McNamara will be back in the lab uh, yes. later this week to see what they can make of this one. And, uh, you know, even uh, Chris Bell. You know, a beautiful pass there by Copeland. Great look. Very, very athletic. Yeah, it good pass. Fun. But uh, I, I thought we'd see a little bit more of uh, Chris Bell uh, maybe coming in now. Orange have made 11 straight shots. Bell had an early three. Has also not gotten a lot of action in this uh, second half. And a offensive foul here by Suleiman, who's been in uh, quite a bit of contact tonight. Good find there by Mintz and an extra pass from Copeland. Passing is his forte. It's a hockey assist. I love those. You know that one two defense are tough to rotate. You have Jesse with a flush on the baseline. Suleiman has fouled out. So he's gone. Kyle Pulse on the floor in the corner there and replacing Suleiman is KJ Rhodes. But none of them are any match for Jesse Edwards tonight. Timeout taken by IUP and Joe Lombardi doing some coaching now. Jesse Edwards with the 14 points. Four of the five players on the floor right now for Syracuse have either 14 or 15 points. And, uh, let's uh, check out a little work from what Benny Williams has done in this game. He is the uh, leading scorer for the Orange with 15 points. That's where it started, Matt, with this nice follow-up, and then it gives your confidence on a pull-up. Pretty nice, and then the next will be the three, and uh, this is what fans were waiting to see. Last year, a little bit of arc on it. That wasn't as flat, but, um, and again, he's pressing at the front, so he's coming towards the basket. But uh, just watching this last time out, you know, I said all of the game, Joe Lombardi's been very calm, players coach. He just lit them up for the last, 30 40 seconds and I basically he's telling his team look at this game's not over give 100% and he's sending a message but I, I, I see him very calm in the sidelines winning a lot of games but when you're down to have Syracuse go on this huge run uh, being down six and uh, you know it's a 21 point swing uh, you have to you have to set a statement and let these guys know this isn't acceptable Ethan Porterfield on the turnaround what do you think they're going to be the better team in virtually all their games this year at uh, IUP. They'll show up with more talent. Doesn't mean they'll never trail though. They might not be down 15 a whole lot. But they're going to have to dig out of a deficit in a game that matters. And for them, all that really matters is their placement in the NCAA tournament and how far they can go in the spring. Number two in Division Two right now. And Gerard on second effort is able to ring the bell. Joe with a quick 10. I, you know, he was held at eight. He, a couple threes and some free throws and a pull up and now he's probably going to come out. His night is done. Porterfield hemmed in along the baseline. Gerard now with 17 points and uh, has come alive. He's the kind of guy, too, that if you let him get enough looks and he sees the basket cleanly, he can go on a run by himself and drop six, eight, ten points on you in a hurry. Gerard helping to put this one away. There are all kinds of products in this world. Things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there, to guide you through the happiest, 
in most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. I was diagnosed with cancer in May, and I now take a great many more prescription drugs. For years, politicians have talked about forcing drug companies to lower their prices, but that didn't happen until Raphael Warnock finally got it done. Without Raphael Warnock, this never would have passed. Senator Warnock not only cares about seniors, but he actually got something done for us. I'm Raphael Warnock, and I approve this message. What are you doing here? that inspires. Yo, my name is Luis, and the little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is the different flavors that are hitting your mouth at every millisecond. You get the explosion and the zestiness of the chicken, then that spice just kicks in, and if you had that cilantro lime, perfection. Hi, this is Becky, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is that marinade, they make sure that it is on the entire piece of chicken and not just on top. The pepper, whatever else is secret in their marinade, it's amazing. He's coming. All my life. What can that will for? All my life. Now is our time all my life. to strike. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Rudy PG-13, November 11th. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football. They dream about this, let's go! Because you have to be ready for an AFC North treat on Halloween night. We run Ohio! The Bengals' offense is ready to be scary good. Me and Nasty, let's go. go! And the Browns are ready to cast a spell. One on one! Sorry. Seven early points and of late, a mini run by himself, Matt, to uh, provide some cushion here. Well, he's almost, you know, he, he's been denied a lot in transition and uh, playing off the ball, but uh, just really caught fire. That's a confident shooter when you miss a pull up and you get relocated. Uh, but a quick 10, and now he's there. He scored 17, and I, I believe his night is finito. Making that late three. He'll have plenty of opportunities over the course of the season to shoot the triple, playing off the ball this year, and excited about it. IUP now trails by 16, and Dave Morris gets three of those back with a friendly roll. Morris had a nice night, five threes for him, and a game-high 21 points. Hadn't heard from him, though, once they are up six. So, you know, he, he couldn't be the go-to guy and make buckets. Chris Bell's back, Matt. Edwards had it pulled out of bounds underneath. Jaheim Bethea touching it last. Seidner Torrance back off the injury. Directing traffic with the inbound. Benny Williams an opportunity. It's a big time move. Great jab step. Pull up left just short and flat. The shot was especially flat last year. You can see some improvement. He and Adrian Autry putting in a ton of work, but obviously that has to start with the player. The commitment to be in the gym before practice, after practice. Porterfield hadn't missed since early in the game. Say it. Extra pass, Kyle Pulse. In and out. And Williams, the rebound. Double double tonight for Benny Williams. They really share the ball well, though. They just IUP, extra pass, diagonal. They look for each other, rebound. Uh, very, very well coached. 15 points and 11 boards for Benny. Both would be regular season career highs. And off the bell, miss. Another chance for the Crimson Hawks. We'll play another ACC team in an exhibition action down in Coral Gables against Miami. Nice little trip. Yeah, not bad if you can get it, right? Yeah, Coach Saranaga, Coach Bayheim, Coach Lombardi, all friendly.
In the lane, a turning slam by Jesse Edwards. That might be enough for him with a dead ball chance to get out this whistle blown just for the purpose of subs. And Shondell Jones, we thought maybe he'd be on ice. I think he uh, comes back into the game. Look at the expression with Porterfield at that. He's like, I'm just tired of guarding the seven footer. He's been banging around with him all night down low, trying to front the post. That's just a tough guard for, you know, expecting someone to do that with Jets. He's just so athletic. Orange are entering the bench. And that man's about to breathe a sigh of relief. The fine uh, director of basketball operations, Pete Corsiniti, handles all the details. <laughs> and he booked this game. But he did it before COVID and before 90 or so wins uh, by this IUP team. He kind of held off Coach Lombardi. Yep, we'll get you on the schedule. We'll get you. And then, you know, Coach Behan wasn't uh, psyched to see a 33-win team coming in here with four returning starters. But that's how it works in the scheduling game. So Tough. Pete can ease now, relax the rest of the evening. Sure. Wouldn't bother it be responsible for bringing in a team that knocked off the orange in a warm-up. Two's here by 15. And in the lane is Malik Brown with the freshman with the left hand. Just for the move, great footwork by Malik. Using the left. Dave Morris feeling it tonight, not this time. Too hot to handle. And off a knee and out of bounds. Well, Jones out. I don't blame it. I don't know why he was even yeah. in in the last five minutes. Yeah, that's about enough. Get on the bus, maybe another... Dinosaur takeout and hit the road. Final minute of exhibition game number one. The old three man we the clock. Yeah. Justin Taylor. Oh, had the right idea for Peter Carey. The timing was off. Two on one the other way with Torrance back. Circus shot hangs on the rim and falls wow. for Bethea. Wow. Uh, this team would tear up to any YMCA, oh. you can imagine. They'd show up unassuming, and they've got a lot of shots on this team. I tell you, they, you, you called it. I think they're you know upper echelon of the MAC. Yeah. They, they really are. They have athletes. Two guys are out. You have your best player. Crafty. On a, they played a lot together. Yeah. 20 you, minutes. You, your best player can't play more than 20 minutes. Rick there by Taylor. Keep in mind, this is the team that's only been practicing with this group since the 15th. That's a Division II rule. Torrance gooses one up and just in front of the horn, a three by Symir Torrance. Good to see him back from the fall. First points of the night for Cy. And Syracuse, like the last time IUP came to town, saw a challenge, able to get the upper hand and put it away down the stretch as the orange roll in the first of two exhibitions. Benny Williams a double-double, Jesse Edwards a strong game, and Syracuse wins it 86 to 68. Hope you enjoyed it. 12 players in the game early for the Orange. They're able to pull away from a top D2 team. For Kristen Hennessy and the crew back in the control room, and for Matt Rowe, I'm Matt Park saying so long. We'll see you again Tuesday night. There are all kinds of products in this world, things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there, to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. Stacey Abrams backs Joe Biden totally, unquestioningly. She sucked up to Biden. She backed his economic agenda, destroyed retirement savings, ravaged family budgets, sent America into recession. Here in Georgia, Brian Kemp stands his ground.
cowers to no one. He brought jobs, cut family taxes, funded our schools. But Stacey Abrams wants to double down on failure. Don't let Stacey Abrams do to Georgia what they've done to America. It's not easy being a farmer. You're up with the sun and down in the dirt. It's hard work, but you like it that way. Nature is constantly changing, but it's not in your nature to quit. You sacrifice to support your family and our communities. It's only fair that there's someone supporting you. Yo, my name is Luis, and the little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is the different flavors that are hitting your mouth at every millisecond. You get the explosion and the zestiness of the chicken, then that spice just kicks in, and if you add that cilantro lime, perfection. Hi, this is Becky, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Spicy Deluxe is that marinade, they make sure that it is on the entire piece of chicken and not just on top. The pepper, whatever else is secret in their marinade, it's amazing. 